Hello everyone, welcome to virtualbrigade.com. In this video, I'll explain how to deploy the platform services controller. With that, let's get started. So, for this particular demonstration, I have already downloaded the vCenter Server Appliance ISO image and extracted the files. So, once you extract the files, there would be a folder vCSI UI installer. So, since I am installing it from my Windows machine, I will log in to the Windows 32 folder. Inside the Windows 32 folder, there is an installer executable file. Double click on the installer executable file. So, on the vCenter Server Appliance installer, you have the install, upgrade, migrate, and restore. So, if you want to start the new vCenter Server installation or the Platform Services Controller installation, you will click on install from the install on this particular installer allows you to install a vCenter server appliance 6.7 or a platform services controller 6.7 installing the appliance is a two-stage process wherein the first stage involves deploying a new appliance to the target vCenter server or a ESXi host once this first stage installation is complete in the second stage installation step it basically completes the setup of the deployed appliance in order to proceed click on next on the end user license agreement accept the license agreement and then click on next on the select deployment type we have two different type of types of deployments one is your embedded platform services controller and the second deployment type would be external platform services controller so if you choose to deploy the embedded platform services controller, the vCenter server gets installed with the embedded platform services controller as shown in this particular image. If you want to deploy the external platform services controller, you can choose platform services controller. So this will deploy a separate appliance external for uh, uh, the vCenter server. Once the platform services controller virtual machine is deployed, you can then deploy the vCenter server and then point the vCenter server to the external platform services controller that was deployed. So in this particular lab, I will deploy the external platform services controller and then I will do the vCenter server installation which basically points to the external platform services controller. So let's go ahead and de deploy the platform services controller which is going to be the external platform services controller. Choose the deployment type and then click on next. Here on the appliance deployment target, you need to type the ESXi host name or the vCenter server name. And then type the HTTPS port, the username either for your ESXi host or for the vCenter server. So since I have typed my uh, vCenter server, I would enter my uh, admin credentials of my vCenter server. So type the vCenter server or the ESXi host administrator account and then click on next. On the certificate warning page, click on yes. On the select folder, you either select the data center or the virtual machine folder and then click next. On the select compute resource, you select the cluster or the ESXi host and then click on next. On the setup virtual machine appliance VM page, you enter the name of the platform services controller virtual machine. So this is going to be my vbpsc028.virtualbrigade.com. type the root account password so this is going to be my platform services controller root user accounts password confirm the password and then click on next on the select data store page select the data store and then click next 
on the configure network settings page select the network so this particular virtual machine is now going to connect to the vm network the ip version would be ip version 4 so it will all, you can also select the ip version 6 ip assignment would be static or can be dynamic so i am selecting the static the fully qualified domain name of this particular virtual machine so the vbpsc 02a is the fqdn and the IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, DNS server, and HTTP and HTTPS ports. Once you enter all this information, click next. On the ready to complete stage one, click on finish to deploy the new virtual machine. So this basically takes a couple of minutes, if not five to 10 minutes to complete the deployment of the platform services controller. The stage one uh, deployment of uh, the platform services controller is completed. Let's go ahead and click on continue to perform the post uh, deployment. So in the second stage uh, of the deployment process, we basically set up the platform services controller appliance wherein we configure the uh, SSO. So let's click on continue. So on the stage two, set up platform services controller appliance on the introduction page you will see the setup platform services controller so installing the platform services controller as we discussed is the uh, two-step process wherein the first step involves uh, the installation of the platform services controller appliance and in the second stage uh, we basically set up the platform services controller so let's click on next On the appliance configuration, you can uh, synchronize the time. So the time synchronization mode can be uh, you are synchronize the time with the ESXi host or you can also synchronize with your NTP servers. So let me go ahead and type the NTP server name to synchronize with the NTP servers. So 192.168.110.2 is the NTP server name and the SSH access if you want to enable you can enable the SSH access so enable the SSH access and then click on next on the SSO configuration page you have two options you can create a new SSO domain or you can also join the existing SSO domain so in this particular lab I'll demonstrate how to create a new SSO domain in the next lab I'll also set up the external platform services controller to join an existing domain. For now, let's go ahead and create a new SSO domain called vSphere.local. By default, the vSphere.local is the default SSO domain. I'm pretty much fine with the vSphere.local domain. And set up the administrator password for the SSO user called administrator. I'm going to enter my site name as Bangalore. Once you enter the details, you can click on next. On the configure CEIP, the join uh, to join the VMware customer experience improvement program, you can enable this particular checkbox and then click on next. On the ready to complete page, you verify the details of the platform services controller. We have given the static IP address for the VBPSC 02A, the IP address subnet mask default gateway and DNS server. And the time synchronization mode, we selected the NTP server to synchronize the time. The NTP server name are the IP address, the SSO, SSH 
access we have enabled the ssh access and uh, the domain name we have selected is the vsphere.local if you want to give any other name you can give that as well so i am okay with the vsphere.local and the username is the administrator and we have also set the password for the administrator and we have opted in for the ceip so the customer experience improvement program once you verify all the details you can click on finish to complete the setup for the external platform services controller so once you click on finish you will not be able to pause or stop the installation from completing once it is started click okay to continue or click cancel to stop so i'm okay with continue with the installation so this will typically takes uh, about 5 to 10 minutes to complete the setup for the platform services controller so now the external platform services controller appliance setup is in progress setup is in progress services on this appliance are starting so their services include your licensing so the external uh, platform services controller or the embedded platform services controller basically provides the common infrastructure services to the vSphere environments the services includes your uh, licensing the certificate management and authentication with the uh, vCenter single sign on let's wait for the appliance to set up so this basically takes uh, 5 to 10 minutes uh, as you can see the installation of the external platform services controller is completed so in order to log in or to open the appliance getting start page you can click on the link out here so if i click on this particular link it will take me to the appliance uh, page so let's go ahead and click on i understand risk and add the exception and confirm the security exception so this is uh, you have reached a platform services controller the platform services controller web in interface is now integrated as a plugin in the vSphere client so please go to the administration section in the vSphere client to manage the vCenter server's single sign on and certificate to access a vCenter server node use the url https fully qualified domain name or the ip address so this completes the external platform services controller installation so we have seen how to deploy the external platform services controller let's go ahead and log into the external platform services controller appliance so you type the ip address or the fully qualified domain name along with the port 5480 so this is the login page of the external platform services controller you type the root credentials that we have already set up during the installation so type the root user account and the password and then click on login so once you log into the appliance management on the summary page you can see the host name the host name is vbpsc028.virtualbrigade.com the type of the product is the external platform services controller that we have deployed and the product is uh, vmware vcenter server appliance what is the version and what is the build number along with the health status so you can see the overall health status is good cpu memory database mm -hmm. storage and swap file all are showing great and good and the single sign on uh, domain status so the domain is the vspear.local and the status is running if you go to the monitor tab or monitor uh, section of this particular page you basically see the cpu memory and disk and network statistics how the cpu and memory has been doing over the period of time and uh, when you go to the access so you can see we have the ssh login enabled the direct console user interface is enabled the console cli and the bash shell what is the status of these and if you go to the networking you see the host name the dns servers that we have configured and what is the next status so the status of the network interface card is up and what is the mac address the ip version 4 address the default gateway and the proxy settings we have uh, https http and ftp disabled and if you go to the time you basically see the time zone that we have already set what is the time synchronization mode we have configured the external platform services controller with uh, ntp synchronization and uh, the time 
servers we have the 192.168.110.2 and is server reachable the current appliance time what is the time of the uh, external platform services controller the services what are the different services are running and what is the state so these all these services are set to start automatically currently they are healthy and all are started and when you go to the update so you basically see what is the current version and what is the target version if there are any uh, uh, updates available you can stage and then install so if you want to check you can click on the check updates if you go to the administration so you will see the password requirements the password must be at least uh, six characters long should not have any previous five passwords the password expires was set to yes and validity of the password is set to 90 days and email for expiration warning so if you want to set you can set the uh, email uh, when it expires when it is due to expire you will get an email and the password expires on november 28th 2018 which is exactly 90 days from now and if you want to configure the syslog you can configure the forward configuration and when you click on configure you basically type the server address which is your syslog server what is the protocol the tls tcp relp and udp are supported and what is the port and when you go to the backup you can configure the backup what is the schedule and if you want to start the backup now you can click on backup now so these are the uh, options that are available on the appliance management interface so if you want to log out you can click on log out so this completes the uh, external platform services controller installation so in my next video i'll show you how to deploy the vCenter server appliance and uh, point the vCenter server installation to the external PSC. Thank you for watching. Please do subscribe to my channel.